And on the, I believe on the back of your um, bulletin, you see special thanks to all those who, uh, Rachel and Miss Roxanne and Trent and Rhonda, and I'm sure there are others here that I'm missing that are participating and helping out. Thank you all um, for investing in our kids like this. Um, listen, I'm not going to keep you long. Um, they had such a great message, and that message is very simple. And that is, um, in fact, it, Jesus sums it up in Luke 19.10. He says, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save the lost. Um, that's the reason Jesus came. Why do we celebrate Christmas? How can we have peace and joy and contentment and, 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 and all those things to fill our life? It is because He came to seek and to save the lost. I, I want you to just think about this for just a moment, okay? Um, now, when He's talking about uh, He came to seek and to save that which was lost, friends, that's us. Okay, every single one of us have sinned against that holy God that we sang about today. All right, that sin separates us from Him, and so as Pastor Brandon said earlier, and so that sin separates us from Him. But the good news is, Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost, that which was separated from God, though that which was dying and going to hell. God is not willing that any should perish, but wishes that all should come to repentance. That's what it's about. Now, I want you to think about this. When you think about losing something, how many of you lost something before? Have you lost something before? Um, everybody, all of us have lost something, right? And so sometimes maybe you've got a pen in your pocket, but, but oh, man, I lost my pen. Or a pen. You know what? I can find a new one, right? It's, it's, uh, that's not that important. You know, I may, have, I may have a breath mint. Now, that may be more important than I want to admit. But you know what? If I lose it, um, it's, it's not that it's not that important. And so, however, there are things that if, you, if we lose, we're going to turn the house upside down, right? You lose your keys. Where, where are my keys? How many of you here are is somebody that, that comes in and you just take your keys out and throw them, on, throw them down somewhere? Okay? You just you do that. Nobody wants to admit that. I have a few that are willing to admit that. Um, you lose your cell phone. How many have done this before? How many of you, I, I, okay, I, I hate to admit that I've actually done this before and so forth. So I'm, I'm talking to my wife on the phone, and all of a sudden I'm like, oh my goodness, where's my phone? Where's my phone? Oh, there it is. I, I've done that. Um, your kids, how many of you lost your kids before? Okay, um, I hate to admit I've done that too. Um, but there are, those things are so important. What are you going to do? You're going to turn the house upside down. You're going to search everywhere. I've lost, I've lost my phone. I've lost my keys or whatever. We're turning it upside down. And you go to great lengths. Listen, if something is important enough to you, you search for it. Here's the point I want to make with this. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Jesus, you are so, you are so important to Jesus that he was willing to leave his home in heaven. Come as a baby in a manger. Now think about that for a minute. For the God of the universe to come as a baby. To live a sinless life and to suffer and die for you. He was willing to come all that way so that you can be saved. That's how much he loves you. That's what these boys and girls were singing about. Amen? How do we respond to that? Here's how we respond to that. John chapter 1 verse 12 says this. For as many as received him. In other words, so he has come, he stepped out of heaven, we have to believe that he was who he said he was. The Bible says he's the son of God. That he, that he did what he said he did. That he gave his life as a sacrifice for our sin on the cross. So I have to know, I have to realize and admit that I'm a sinner. That's hard for us sometimes. We want to think, well, you know what, I'm a pretty good person. Compared to who? Maybe compared to the person sitting next to you, I don't know. But, but compared to God, we all have sinned. We bust hell wide open on our best day. And so he came to die to pay the penalty for our sin, that if we believe as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name. We will say, yes, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are who you said you are, that you did what you said you did, that I'm a sinner and I need you as my Savior. Guess what the Bible says? All who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. 
what the scripture says. God, would you come into my life? Would you save me from my sin? Take me to heaven when I die. That's why he came. That's why they were singing. If you're here this morning and you've never put your faith and trust in Christ. Now, let me be, let me be clear. What I'm not saying is, you, some of you are saying, well, you know what, Pastor? I've, 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 I've always believed in God. Um, you all may, may always have believed there was a God, but there needs to be a point in time in our life when we admit that we're a sinner. We admit that we need Jesus as our Savior, and we ask Him to come into our life and be the Savior and Lord of our life. There has to be a time. That's what we call being born again. John chapter 1, verse 12, the second part of that, um, it says, But as many as received Him to them, He gave the right to become children of God to those who believe in His name, who were born, not of blood, nor the will of man, nor the will of the flesh, but of God. So when we say yes to Jesus and we receive him, God does a miracle in our heart and he transforms us. We all need that. We want to go to heaven when we die. We need that now for him to give us a heart of flesh instead of a heart of stone. We receive him, we believe in him, and we become his children. That's how we become part of the family of God. That's how our name's written in heaven. If you've never done that, I want to invite you today. I'm going to give you an opportunity here in just a moment. To receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. Let's say you have. And I know many of you here today have trusted Christ as your Savior. What is this? What's the message of Christmas for us this year? Well, number one, we need to remember what Christ has done for us and never forget that. But here's the second thing is this. If Jesus' mission, can you put John, um, or excuse me, Luke 19, 10 back up on the screen. If Jesus' mission The reason he came was to seek and to save the lost. If he saved me, then don't you think that ought to be our mission as well? His heart ought to be our heart. As we go into this Christmas season, as we prepare our heart for Christmas, it is, yes, about what Christ has done for you, and you need to receive Jesus as your Savior. But it's also about what Christ has done for those around you as well. And he's called you to be a light in the dark places around you. How does God want to use you this Christmas? We've got this week's Thanksgiving, and then we've got roughly a month till Christmas. We are going to be doing some things here at Southside to encourage you to reach out to those around you. This Christmas, invite somebody to Christmas. Share Christ with them in a in a very personal way so that he can do the wonderful things in their life that he's done in yours. Listen, if Christ gives us joy and peace and love for others, why would we not want to share that? Amen? Amen. So that's my challenge to you today. I want to ask Pastor Brandon if he'll come right now. We're going to um, sing a closing song together, a time to respond. And here's what I want to invite you to do. Um, I invite you to sing. I also want to invite you, if maybe you need to just bow your head right where you are. Ask Christ Jesus into your life. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe you are who you said you are. I believe that you did what you said you did for me, that you died on the cross to pay for my sins. And I want to receive you as my Savior today, right now. Friends, it's as easy as praying and asking him to come in. I want to invite you to do that. I'm going to be here at the front. Pastor Mark's here. We'll be glad to talk with you. Maybe there's some way you need for us to pray with you. Uh, Whatever it is, I want to invite you to respond to the Lord. I know it's maybe a little scary, all these people. Listen, if you want to, right where you're seat, want to pray and invite Christ. But here's what I want to encourage you to do. If, If you do that today, don't leave here without letting us know, hey, today I accepted Christ as my Savior. You can come up and just, just out in the hallway afterwards, just come and say, Pastor, today I received Jesus as my Savior. Today, I made a recommitment of my life to the Lord. I realize I can't do without Him in my life. Pastor Brandon, you lead us. Let's stand together.